Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, no matter where you are on the planet. My name is Dean Zhang Sr., KA3YJM. This is going to be a simple video on how I have cobbled together a remote uh, ham radio station uh, on a shoestring, if you will. This uh, video is in three parts. There's this little introduction here. Then there's going to be another section uh, where there's the actual setup and of the uh, software that, as it is set up on the iMac here and uh, with the different windows and how I move between the windows and how I operate. And then in the last section, we'll do an actual QSO. It'll be real short. There'll be some subtitles or lower thirds with some details in the video, um, which will help answer some questions. As for more details and photographs about uh, um, myself, my bio and ham radio and so on and so forth and, and this setup, uh, go to my QRZ page uh, for KA3YJM. That'll help you out there. Uh, the long story short, the Reader's Digest version, the elevator version, is I live in an HOA and I didn't intend to reactivate myself into ham radio until after I was in my townhome for quite some time. Uh, I upgraded from, uh, let's see, I was a novice technician to general, from general uh, to extra class. And then uh, what happened was uh, I said, well, I'll just hang some wires out stealth-like, and I hung an EFHW8010 uh, out in the back, and that worked out terrific. I got my DXCC as well as uh, worked all states, and, and it, it was terrific. As a matter of fact, I even had an amplifier at the time. And then the HOA finally, after three, four years or so, found the wire, cut the EFHW, and I was out of business. Quite angry, but then again, I was, you know, it was a flagrant violation of the HOA rules. So that being said, a friend of mine said, well, why don't you set up your station in my basement? I said, that's terrific, but it's going to take some work. And so I was allowed to uh, hang some uh, dipoles in diff two different directions that are outlined in my QRZ bio in the trees in the backyard, run a 220 circuit for the KPA 1500. And here we are. I do casual DX on this, on this setup that you'll see. Um, I don't do any um, FT8 or any of the AKA fake modes right now from here. I can do them from the other station, and I have. Uh, this is just a, this is a way to get into my station remotely to uh, upload, download uh, confirmations and data like that, and then to use single sideband um, if there's something going on I wanted to participate in. So this is a casual setup. This is not your hardcore remote setup that you would rent or lease space or something like that. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope that it's uh, meaningful for you and uh, if it applies and uh, you get something out of it. It's been a pleasure to, to uh, put this together with some help of others. By the way, this microphone you see here is a blue, a B-L-U-E microphone. Um, it's uh, a Yeti blue is what they call it, a Yeti blue microphone. It's a USB microphone and that's the microphone that I'll be using um, as we uh, move forward. So hope you enjoy this. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to uh, give folks an idea of what it looks like to work this remote station I've cobbled together. This is my iMac screen uh, here in Bel Air, Maryland, and we're going to connect to uh, what I call the bunker, which is the remote shack outside of Newark, Delaware. It's in a basement. Um, it's got a PC by it. It's an ICOM 7610 with a KPA 1500 amplifier. So in order to do that, this is how it all begins. This is what it looks like. The first thing we'll do here is uh, enable a cursor so you can see a little bit more about what's going on. I'll go down to my uh, system settings here and change the background so that it looks a little bit easier um, to see what's going on for you and me and everyone else. The next thing we'll do is we'll fire up SDR control. Now SDR control has uh, a connect button here. When I do, it'll open up a couple of windows. The first window here uh, indicates that there's a, a wired bunker connection at 10.0.0.18. That's for diagnostics. If I take my MacBook Air up and put it on a, on a card table up there and wire it directly into the network, I can do some things up there uh, that I need to do directly. I haven't had to do that since I set it up. We're going to click on this address up here and actually connect to the router. Pretty quickly, uh, we're going to hear some sound. I just put that on there like that. I'm going to leave um, the sound at a lower level uh, because I found that the this can actually come across this desktop recording and be quite a nuisance. Next thing we'll do, and you'll, uh, you'll see is uh, 
we'll open up some tools, we'll put up the uh, network stats down here at the bottom. And this is the where I saw the latency initially. There were so many errors down here that if it's over 0 0.05, it won't work. And I was up around 1 or 2% with latency. So this is, this is what we've been watching off and on. And right now the latency is, is virtually nothing. So that's why we're seeing a nice waterfall and so on and so forth. We're also going to need to be able to tune. So we're going to open up the tuning panel. And also, I like to put the uh, push to talk button up there too. Although there is one here on the screen, I like to use this one. So we're all set to go here um, with one of the two receivers in the 7610. The other receiver is off to the right. It's intentionally not being used in this particular demonstration. And also heats up a lot of, uh, of real estate on the screen. Next thing we'll do is we'll go to TeamViewer. And this is how TeamViewer is set up for me. Um, I have a couple of other PCs, and I'm going to double-click on this one. This is the bunker outside of Newark, Delaware. And uh, once that comes up, we'll say, yep, we liked the last session. We really did, and we're going to close this because we need this real estate right here. We're going to need this real estate up here. Next thing we're going to do is to turn on uh, the Ellacraft KPA 1500 remote utility. This happens to be a really super little utility. You can, be, you can use the, I'm using a USB connection for this. You could use it across the network. So I'm going to turn the power on for the amplifier. And the reason I need to do things in a certain order, which is what I'm showing you here, is that when I click on a spot in a few minutes, which drives through rig control, the radio, the radio is going to change the frequency here. When it changes the frequency in the uh, ICOM 7610, I have a CIV cable that connects to the Elecraft over here. And that CIV cable will send across the precise frequency. It's not just sensing, it's actually going to send across the exact frequency to the Elecraft. And if I have a solution for it, it'll tune to it, or if it's anywhere close to it, it'll automatically tune to it. Next step is to open up AC Log. I will do away with the uh, little band map on the side and uh, gives again to just to have some extra real estate. And we should see some spots come up here too. All right, now what I'm going to do, and I hope the volume is low enough that uh, you can see that something's going on here. You can hear it on 10 meters, and it's at 28,485. Well, let's pick, um, let's pick Italy at 28,360. So I'm gonna pick a spot. Rig control is going to change me over to 28360. It looked up the gentleman, our uh, station, Rudy, in Italy. And, of course, this is what I mentioned, the spot where the little QRZ window comes up. This area here, I hope to um, save for um, the control of my antenna system. Uh, brief explanation quickly right now. My antenna system is manual. Um, it's it's uh, you turn a rotary switch for four different positions. I can't do that from here. So I leave it set on the uh, antenna uh, dipoles that I like the most oriented northeast toward, um, toward Europe uh, for 10, 15, and 20 meters. So eventually I'll have a little window here for software that'll run on the PC in the shack in the basement and I'll be able to change antennas from one to four uh, for my different bands. So that's what's going to happen. At this point, um, I can't really demonstrate a, um, a QSO by uh, responding at this point because what's going to happen is it's going to try and use two microphones. And the microphone that I'm speaking into to do the screen recording right now is the, um, is the same one that uh, uh, SDR control is going to try and use and, and they can't do that. It's impossible. So this is the screen layout. This is the routine that I go through. And if I was going to quit, I just do it in reverse order. I come over here and nicely exit out of uh, AC log. I turn the power off on the um, Elecraft. And as soon as that's off, I close the session and I say, yeah, I liked it, it was good. And this is TeamViewer, and I minimize that. I take the go over here to the ICOM, I disconnect SDR control, I take SDR control, and I quit that, and I'm right pretty much back to where I was, and that's how you start, and that's how you end a session. So next, we'll go into an actual um, uh, QSO, and you, can, and you can see how all that works.
Kilo Alpha 3 Yankee Juliet Mike. Kilo Alpha 3 Yankee Juliet Mike, very good morning. Thanks for the call. You're 5 and 9 in Scotland. Name is Ian, India Alpha, India November. Over. Well, good afternoon pretty soon. Uh, Ian, the uh, name here is Dean, Delta Echo Alpha November. I'm actually uh, making a recording, a video of um, remote operations on a shoestring. So I'm talking to you remote from uh, about uh, 40 or 50 miles uh, from, my, uh, from my actual radio station that's in a basement. So uh, I really appreciate your uh, coming back and uh, uh, helping me out with this little demo. Unbeknownst to you, go ahead. Yeah, very good. Uh, that's fine, Dean. Uh, nice to, uh, to be able to help you out in any way. And uh, your remote station is working very well. Uh, QTH here, about 50 miles southwest of Glasgow, in the southwest part of Scotland. Uh, it's not a bad day over here. We've got 9 Celsius, which uh, must be in the, the high 40s Fahrenheit. And uh, we even have a little sunshine, which is very welcome, Dean. Uh, Kilo Alpha 3, Yankee and Juliet Mike. Uh, so, uh, maybe tell me where your uh, your transmitter is, Dean. Which state your transmitter is in, please? Mike, Mike Zero, Tango, Fox, Uniform. Uh, Roger, Kilo Alpha 3, Yankee, Juliet Mike. Ian, yeah, I, the whole setup is in Maryland. Uh, I'm, I'm licensed and addressed in Bel Air, uh, but the uh, transmitter is up in the corner, if you will, the north um, east corner of Maryland, right outside of Newark, Delaware. If you bring up, bring up a stateside map, uh, uh, as I mentioned, about uh, 40 miles away or so. So I'm going across the internet. I'm using a USB microphone. And by the way, your, uh, your audio is gorgeous and you're a solid 5759 here this morning. Just absolutely beautiful. And I'm using a pair of, um, uh, actually, I've got some dipoles hanging up there. This is a fan dipole for 10, 15, and 20. And I'm pushing about uh, oh, 600 watts right now. And uh, gee, I'm really, again, really pleased to be able to throw this thing together and uh, pick up my first call and uh, it be you for this uh, demonstration video. Go ahead. Yeah, very good, Dean. Well, it's all working well and uh, sounding good here. And all, all noted in the location of uh, your equipment. And uh, yeah, I brought up the map. So I see Bel Air. Uh, which is just north uh, northeast of uh, Baltimore, and yeah, follow up into the top corner. So uh, th there's New York. Yep, I got it. So uh, I see where everything is. Well, it's working very well, Dean, and uh, nice signal coming across. There's no latency on the, the signal. There's no uh, distortion. It, it sounds great, over. Well, boy, golly, geez, gee whiz, thanks very much. Let's sell this solution. <laughs> Thank you so much for the for the reports. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, move on and close out the video and add it to my clip. And again, I thank you so much uh, uh, for your help this morning in this QSO. And I'll let you tie the ribbons on at 7-3. Please stay safe and stay healthy over there. And thank you uh, very much. It's so great to hear your voice from Scotland this morning. This is KA3YJM. Yep, okay, Dave, I'll copy fine. You're picking at 20 dB over S9. Great signal, and uh, I'll look for your uh, I'll look for your video. Uh, are you going to post it up on the, uh, maybe on YouTube or something? Over. Uh, Roger, it'll be on YouTube, and it'll be in our club, uh, our club YouTube channel, which is NEMARC, uh, N-E-M-A-R-C. It's Northeast Maryland Amateur Radio Club, NEMARC.org. And um, I'll see if I can get you a link by your QRZ page in your email. Go ahead. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Uh, not only because it's a video of me, but uh, <laughs> because I'm interested in the subject. Because uh, you know, your, uh, your your idea of uh, remote and a shoestring appeals to a Scotsman, over. <laughs> Roger, let's hope this video comes out okay. That's the only part now we have to wait and see. So I'll move it across and, and we'll see how it comes out. And uh, I'll get in touch with you in email. Thanks again. Going to log the call. Thanks again, Ian. 73 K 3 yjm Have a great afternoon. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Dean. All the best and uh, look forward to seeing your video. 73 bye-bye.